Joel Tyner, former county legislator for Dutchess County. We have uh, this is our weekly Zero Waste Dutchess meeting. We have Neil Selvin from Zero Waste USA. We have Judy Mouse from some Zero Waste Dutchess. John Rath representing himself. Jill Fieldstein of Citizens of Dover, SaveDover.org. Intrepid longtime environmentalist, Dorian Tignanelli. And, and Dave Heller, the founder of Ranked Choice. So my four-year-old's not good. So, Neil, tell people why they need to come out October 9th. Um, <clears throat> people need to come out on October 9th to find out information about why the current system, solid waste management system in Dutchess County, uh, is uh, presenting a financial uh, risk and environmental risk uh, from the pollution and the cost of operating a new incinerator, which is the current plan for uh, Dutchess County. And the uh, uh, burning garbage is the most expensive and most polluting way uh, to uh, handle uh, solid waste. And all across the country, uh, there are policies, programs, enterprises uh, that are bringing communities to what we call zero waste. Zero waste means a 90% reduction of the current uh, waste stream no incineration, organics out of landfill, and banning products and packaging that are dangerous to people and to nature. Uh, we will be presenting uh, information from all around the country. Uh, we invite people to come to ask questions, um, and we will uh, be uh, providing very specific examples of what the county and the city of Pekits Poughkeepsie can do uh, to uh, stop incineration and move along uh, the path to zero waste. Amen. You mean the town of Poughkeepsie because it's located in the town. Excuse me. I, I meant the town of, of, of Poughkeepsie. And um, I also want to point out that by moving towards zero waste, the county will be able to create about 300 to 500 good jobs, meaning uh, pay levels and benefit levels uh, to support a middle-class family. And those jobs are essential for a zero waste future in Dutchess County. O'Neill, who's next? Me. My name is John Rath. I'm a citizen of Poughkeepsie and I am very scared for myself and my fellow citizens with the pollution that is going up in the air and the water from the incinerator that's currently operated by the town of Poughkeepsie. There are answers, and one of the answers is a reduction in solid waste. And I'd like everyone to come to this meeting so that they can learn more about the options for reducing solid waste and helping all of our uh, health. Thank you. Thank you. Operated by it's located. It's in the town of Poughkeepsie, but up. And our four-year-old's just not having a good time. But it's operated by the county in the town of Poughkeepsie. Who's next? My name's Jill Fieldstein. I'm with the Concerned Citizens of Dover, a group that was formed to help protect Dover from the influx of power facilities in town. And little did I know that even fighting the power facilities in our town, we're still getting impacted by all this pollution being uh, wafting in our air from this incinerator in Poughkeepsie that I would guess most people don't know anything about. Therefore, I think it's really important to come here, Neil, talk about the incinerator and uh, the problems it causes and all the solutions to having an, uh, the better solutions than having an incinerator. So please join us on October 9th. Thank you, Jill. Mom, Dave, Doreen. Okay, um, I have a different angle in that um, I'm coming at this as a pretty angry person <laughs> in that not only do we have to purchase things wrapped in things that we don't want, we pay for that. We also now have to pay for to getting rid of it. And we're also paying for it to be burned and, and come back as, as a, a pollution. Um, 
we're the only beings on the earth that make garbage. Everybody else, uh, every every other living thing uh, contributes to the flow of things. We're the only ones who make stuff that cannot be biodegradable, that cannot be uh, safely disintegrated. We're, we're, it's on us. This garbage situation is on us. It is our fault. We are the consumers. We have purchased all of these things. We don't complain about it. We just keep buying it and at, at all sorts of ways. And, I, and that's bothering me. The fact that there is a way out, that we can take this waste and turn it into something useful. Um, you know, you know, I make hats out of old sweaters. It's reusing constantly. Um, I can tell you a lot of things that that I found people reuse and make into into great things, and and that's uplifting. But. Um, we can we have to stop wasting our waste <laughs> we need to turn it into uh, a resource and this and zero waste can can help us do that so come and find out yeah mom and how's this for a segue mom is the co-director of zero waste duchess reach her at zero waste duchess at gmail.org those hats she creates out of old sweaters dave over there locked in <laughs> there you go Dave was wearing them. That's Dave Heller, founder of RankChoiceNY.org. Yep. Um, yeah, I would. I completely agree with uh, Judy that we shouldn't be having to force to buy things in packaging that needs to be incinerated or otherwise disposed of. Uh, if things need to be in a package, it should be 100% recyclable, not not anything that's going to last forever. There's no reason we need styrofoam. We need to buy salad in a clamshell. We can put it in a paper bag or something that's biodegradable or reusable and not have to, you know, buy these things that are, are unusable afterwards and, and uh, either have to be landfilled or incinerated. And it would be great if everybody started composting instead of putting perfectly usable um, organic matter into the waste stream, keep it separated, put it in your garden and make great soil and create abundant life. Your microbes feed on that and makes a better soil and a better life. Keep it, keep it separated, stupid. That's what, that's what Neil says. <laughs> you got to keep them separated, just like offspring. Dave, <laughs> Dave, by the way, came up with the bun mo recently about, he was wishing that the members of the county legislature would be a little bit more diligent in reading materials and facts instead of being so obsessed with fire. I will not use the exact same phrase that Dave used, but uh, just a couple questions, uh, Neil, and then we can we can cut the um, the oh, 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 and Mercury and and Doreen, feel free to chime in because it was Doreen Tignanelli who's not just been active for decades, being one of the best environmentalists in the Hudson Valley. It was Doreen who emailed me in early August this Albany Times Union article that clued all, all of us in that the county executive would be presenting the solid waste management plan for a vote in September. So that's why we started having these zero waste touches zooms on a weekly basis in early August. Thank you, Doreen. The New York Times. Thank you, Doreen. On, yes. The New York Times on Sunday. Did you guys see it? Front page about the horrors of Mercury. I haven't sent an email out to my list. Front page. You know, this incinerator has turned the Hudson Valley, not just Poughkeepsie, into a third world country. Because the, the front page was, you know, a person of color and mining gold and mercury, using mercury to mine the gold. But that article, I feel sorry for people who are exposed to it, but that article does us a great big favor because it seven pounds of mercury, don't forget, according to a, a, a Minnesota Department of the Environment study that came out fairly recently, Seven pounds of mercury doesn't sound like a lot. That is enough to contaminate 
3,100 lakes, each lake being 20 acres in size, to make the fish too poisonous to eat. And nobody seems to know, because hardly anybody in the media wants to report on it, thanks to Emily Sachar of the Daily Cat, she reported on it. But 100,000 tons of global warming pollution and carbon dioxide equivalents comes out of that incinerator in Poughkeepsie each year. 100,000 tons of global warming pollutants. A whole bunch of climate activists were just arrested in Nevada, Burning Man, because guess how much carbon emissions comes out of Burning Man each year? 100,000 tons of global warming pollution uh, and, and carbon dioxide equivalents. And that's the same as 22,000 cars being on the road all year. So I am convinced that it's only a matter of time before Vassar students and Marist students and students of all ages and Dutch Community College and Bard students that they make this a real issue because you know that dozens and hundreds of those students just went down to New York City a week or so ago for the march to end fossil fuels. We all know that. I hope I hope they come to 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 hear Neil and ask questions on uh, Monday, October 9th at 6 p.m. Rockefeller Hall at Vassar College. And thanks to Kristen Menking, the head of the Environmental Department at Vassar College, for finding a spot for us. And thanks to Zero Waste USA for co-sponsoring, Zero Waste Warren County, Westchester Alliance for Sustainable Solutions, Working Class Duchess, uh, uh, and we have uh, WHVW, uh, 950 AM and 96.5 FM, and we have the Hudson Valley Air Quality Coalition, all those, and I probably forgot a few, all those organizations are, co and the Duchess Greens are co-sponsoring our event. So it'd be a really sad shame and pity if Neil Selman, top recycling economic development zero waste expert in the country came to Vassar and the house wasn't packed. So please be there. This is, and this is Monday, October 9th, 6 PM Vassar college, Rockefeller hall, room 300. And I'll just say one more thing. And then hopefully we can uh, talk for whatever you want. Laura Hyde of Nyperg invited me in all, uh, to go to the first, one of the first zero waste conferences statewide in Albany in uh, December of 2008, January 2009. My mind was blown. Paul Connett spoke, Neil Selvin spoke. My mind was completely blown. I'm not sure I'd even heard of the phrase zero waste. I was the environmental committee chair of the county legislature at the time, the Democrats of the majority. I got 30 resolutions passed in 2008 and 2009. And one of those resolutions was in March, 2009, Rob Rollison, who's now a Republican conservative state senator, Rob Weiss, conservative county legislator, Jim Michio, all these, I think Donna Bolner was in there, she's still in. Uh, 11 Republicans in the Dutchess County legislature voted with the 12 Democrats in the majority, and Jim Doxey, who was a conservative, caucused with us Democrats. All 25 members of the Dutchess County legislature voted in March 2009 for that resolution that Neil and I wrote for Dutchess County to access federal funds for zero waste planning. And, and Neil just reminded us a week or two ago, this Gary List document, the, the federal government is literally shoveling money out the door for cities, towns, villages, counties to go zero waste. If, uh, you know, Shabazz Jackson and the town of Hurley, the, the town of Hurley just issued an RFP and they are make, creating a zero waste transfer station, food waste composting in the town of Hurley. Uh, and the same replicating the success of New Paltz. So there's no excuse for the town of Clinton. Rhinebeck is moving ahead. They're working with a horse farm now. So I'm going to shut up. Anybody else wanted to say anything else? John, I see your hand up. Yeah, but not for the recording. Okay. So before we stop recording, anybody else with a final pitch to get hundreds of people out there on the ninth? All right, contact my mom, 876-2488. That's 876-2488. Or email her at zerowasteduchess at gmail.com. And we're also looking for help to, to start a website. We're looking for try, trying to start a Zero Waste Duchess website. So anybody could help. All right, I'm starting the stopping the recording. Stop recording. Stop. I think... I, 